What is a survey? How to use surveys in non-experimental research. First off, what is a survey? A survey is a popular method of collecting data. In a survey, the investigators select a group of respondents, collect information, analyze the information in order to research questions. A group of subjects is selected from a larger population through some type of probability sampling. Accurate inference about a large population from a small sample can be made. Surveys are frequently used in business, government, public health, politics, psychology, sociology, transportation, and in our case, in education. How to design a survey. These are the steps that you need in order to create an effective and a well thought out survey. First, you need to define the purpose and objectives, identify resources needed and your target population, choose an appropriate survey method, word the questions carefully, design the survey, develop the directions, develop a letter of transmittal, and of course, run the pilot test on your survey. Now let's take a deeper look at each of these steps in order to better inform ourselves on how to create and utilize a survey. First off, we need to take a look at the two types of designs for which we can be testing. Cross-sectional designs are when information is collected from one or more groups at the same time. This would be taking a look at students, teachers, administrators, or parents' perspectives over the course of one year. You are looking at the attitudes and the decisions of different groups of people in different cohorts about the same issue. The second type of design is longitudinal design. This is where information is collected from the same subjects over time. For example, if you were to collect information about the change of students' attitudes or grades throughout their entire high school career. Now, let's look at the steps. Step one. Define the purpose and objectives. List each of the objectives and research questions being addressed. This is an essential tool in order to design your survey. Step two, you need to identify the resources needed and your target population. It is very important that you calculate the cost of resources needed to carry out the survey and your research being done. Many costs are involved in creating a survey. You need to cost the preparations, how to print it, how to mail it, how to analyze, and you need to figure out what your sample size will be and how long the survey will take. Step three, choose an appropriate survey method. A survey can be done in a variety of ways. Some of the most effective means for conducting a survey are by paper, electronically or web-based, by telephone, or by group or individual interviews. There are many disadvantages to each types of these surveys and they need to be experimented and they need to be thought out before the survey is conducted. Step four is word your questions carefully. Questions should be clear, understandable, and unbiased. You must keep in mind the following when creating a survey. Keep it short and simple. Use everyday common terms that all of your audiences will understand and use grammatically correct language. Make sure that everybody who's reading it can understand. Also, if some of your applicants are not English speakers, make sure it is available in their native language. Step five, design the format. Make sure that the font size, font style, and colors of the format are easy to read and widely known and recognized. This will ensure that all of the people taking the survey will be able to understand the survey. Step six, Develop directions. Make clear instructions so there is no question about how or where to respond when the survey is completed. Give clear directions at the beginning of the survey and at the start of each section with a different response scale. Make sure there will be no confusion in the ability for your participants to make an answer. Step seven, develop a transmittal letter. This informs the people who are taking the survey what you are going to be testing them on and what you're trying to find out. In this letter, keep it brief. No one is going to want to read a letter that is pages and pages long. You should include a statement of the purpose of the research. And you should include a statement on the benefits of this research. Why should people want to take the survey? How can it benefit them? And finally, 
Once you've conducted all these other aspects of your survey, it's time to run the pilot test. This is a critical step in the draft to test out the pilot. This is where you will send out your letter of transmittal. Individuals can comment on the survey and give constructive criticism. This is so you can make sure that there are no flaws in your survey before you do the real deal. I hope this helps you out in your ability to create a survey and utilize it. Good luck.